this one is a lot of old school people's favorites. But is it my favorite of the first four games in the series? Let's find out, shall we? Final Fantasy IV was originally released in Japan for the Super Famicom in 1991. And since the original Final Fantasy II and III were never released outside of Japan, it found itself released as Final Fantasy II on the Super Nintendo and other regions. Since then, it has been refinished, re-released, redesigned, and even expanded. For example, Final Fantasy Chronicles for the Sony PlayStation contained a port of Final Fantasy IV packaged with Chrono Trigger. Next, it was refinished and ported to the Game Boy Advance. Next, it was completely redesigned using 3D models and released on the Nintendo DS. Then the Final Fantasy world was expanded upon the release of the episodic After Years as Nintendo WiiWare. And most recently, the original game was refinished and packaged with the After Years, along with the newly created interlude to create the Final Fantasy IV Complete Collection on the Sony PSP. As for gameplay, throughout the entire wave of releases is pretty much identical to that of the previous games in the series. But the biggest improvement is the beautifully intricate and detailed story. It is told through the introduction, recruitment, and loss of characters to the main party. A party that's led by Cecil, who starts as a Dark Knight troubled by his orders and strives to shed his dark side and follow a new path of light. The story alone is the reason why Final Fantasy IV has been so critically acclaimed and loved throughout the years. Since I do not plan on having a usual top 10 moments from the Let's Play, I will try to say more in this section than I normally do. For my Let's Play, I played by far the best version of the game, the complete collection version on the PSP. I had some difficulties finding a way to record gameplay from my PSP. First I bought two different cables that would allow me to connect my PSP to my TV. One set of component cables and another of regular AV. The problem with the component cables was that it was not compatible with my capture device. The problem with the AV cable is that you cannot play games on the TV screen, only watch video. So, I had to seek out and install a plugin that would force the cables to allow me to play PSP games on my television. The plugin was not perfect as the screen had slight blurry haze to it and sometimes made the video lag. Otherwise, it was a suitable solution and let me use the best version of Final Fantasy IV for my Let's Play. As for specifics, this LP went pretty well. When I began, I had no intention of doing so many voices for the characters, but those of you who have seen this LP know that I went all out on this one. As for the rest of the complete collection, meaning the interlude and the after years, I still have yet to play them, so they are still a possibility for a future continuation of this LP. I may have said I'm not doing a top 10 moments from the Let's Play, but instead, I will list the top 10 bosses from this Let's Play, whether they be fun, difficult, interesting, or just have a cool design. We'll just call this the top 10 coolest bosses from Final Fantasy IV. This battle is just plain weird. And on top of that, it's really sad because you're fighting against Edge's parents. Apparently they had a run-in with the alchemist from Full Metal Alchemist that creates chimeras, because they looking crazy insane like they got no brain. Look at these creepy ass dolls. And then look at this big ass creepy ass doll they combined to form. What the hell, Squaresoft? Just, what the hell? First of all, I know this is the first boss in the game, but it's symbolic and important to some of the later parts of the game. Plus it just looks really cool. All misty and dragony and stuff. Just so much yes going on here. This is a true Dr. Frankenstein and his monster ripoff. But the part that makes this boss fight cool is that when you kill one of them, the one left alive transforms into a stronger version. This game certainly has lots of evolving boss fights. Another one of these bosses who changes as the battle goes on, but the reason this one is cool is because it's semi-scripted in the sense that it seems like you can't even win. Then a cutscene happens and the real battle begins. 
I mostly just like the throwback design of the elf being similar to Astos from Final Fantasy 1. And then when he changes into that dragon, you appreciate it that much more. Ah, the first fight with one of the four elemental fiends, and the only one to grace this list. Not only because he's the first, but because he also looks the coolest. Plus, when you think you've defeated him, he back attacks you in the second form. The only one of the fiends with two completely unique forms. It's too bad that he's also the easiest. This is widely considered one of the more difficult boss fights in the game. But it's also really cool. I mean, you fight lots of summon monsters in this game, as usual, but this summon in particular is unique to this game. This face-changing, Hindu god-looking bitch, she can put up quite a fight. I think I just have this weird affinity to these chicks because of Final Fantasy X. I actually beat Final Fantasy X before I ever beat Final Fantasy IV. But besides that, this is a cool boss fight because each of these beezies has a different specialty, and defeating them can be kind of a puzzle when first attempted. Hint, go for the fat one first. Yet another boss I had seen before I had played this game, as a demon wall appears in Final Fantasy VII as well. But, this version has higher stakes because it is timed. The wall inches ever closer. Will our heroes defeat it fast enough to not be crushed to death? Aside from the fight, the demon wall is just scary. A freaky looking head protruding from the wall reminds me of the face in the wall from the first Nightmare on Elm Street. Okay, so it might have been obvious that the final boss would make it to the top, but it's just awesome. First you fight Zamus' weak ass and think that it was too easy, and you're right, because now he evolves into a giant furry creature that you can barely even touch and all seems hopeless. Then, somehow, you crack that bitch open and see your demon-filled surprise. This crazy-ass, demon-ass, devil-ass beast that is almost indescribable. This is the first time in the series that the final boss had multiple stages, and you could not save the game in between. And it proved to be pretty goddamn epic. Finally, past the NES trilogy, I can start adding the SNES trilogy to the list. Where do I rank Final Fantasy IV in comparison to the games that come before it? It ranks atop the list, finally pushing Final Fantasy I from its pedestal. I think it's easy to see why I put Final Fantasy IV on top. The story alone makes this game loads better than its predecessors. So, with that, we can move on. Much thanks, good people of YouTube, for your views and comments. I will see you next week where I will finish off Final Fantasy February with the review of Final Fantasy V. Peace.